Vigilant Love is a grassroots organization challenging Islamophobia through arts, healing, and activism. We came together in 2015, around the time that the San Bernardino shooting happened. If you can remember what the political climate was during that time, there was a really big lack of compassion and humanity for refugees. There was also a big increase in anti-Muslim acts of discrimination and hate crimes. And I think for Japanese Americans, ever since 9-11, it's felt really important and also like a big responsibility for, um, for our community to be building relationships with Muslim Americans and people impacted by Islamophobia because of our own history. During World War II, after the Pearl Harbor attack, a lot of Japanese and Japanese Americans had felt really directly not only the political systemic impact of being forcibly removed from their homes and sent to incarceration camps. But a lot of them themselves had directly experienced uh, vitriol and discrimination from their neighbors. When we're doing our grassroots organizing work today, it's about making it politically unacceptable that forms of surveillance, incarceration, detention uh, should be happening to impacted communities like Muslims and other immigrants today. The name Vigilant Love comes from this idea that allies need to be vigilant about their love and solidarity for those who are impacted uh, by this current era of Islamophobia, anti-black racism, uh, xenophobia. So it's not just on those impacted to look out for themselves. If we're looking at communities of color in the United States who have experienced um, racism, xenophobia, oppression in different ways, uh, there is a very real mental health impact. Um, you know, when it comes to constantly having to worry about your safety or constantly having to worry about how your presence is impacting others. The Countering Violent Extremism Program and it is housed in the Department of Homeland Security. It's a counterterrorism program that grants funding and provides support to community-based organizations, uh, government agencies, um, K through 12, schools, education. universities, um, with the intention of, hey, we're gonna give you this funding and why don't you help us identify folks who are on a path to radicalization. Uh, the problem with this is there is no path to radicalization. The indicators that are used in this program to see if someone is on a path to radicalization are quite racialized and do tend to um, criminalize uh, religious expression as well as political dissent. So some of the uh, indicators that we've seen um, have to do with, oh, a person is now growing a beard or attending the mosque more frequently or has like voiced opinions about uh, how they don't like the government um, or is beginning to get more politically active. If you look historically at who has been granted CVE funding um, and been supported to do their programming, it's organizations that are serving the Muslim community, refugee communities, um, black and brown communities, uh, and we know that uh, Inherently, there is a stereotype that folks from these communities are more prone to violence and programs like CVE just further those stereotypes. On our website, we've created a value statement and a sign-on that's asking mental health providers to reject CVE funds whenever possible. And this is really important if you're a client or a potential person who wants to reach out for mental health support because we want to give you something tangible that you can bring to your therapist or social service provider and say, hey, I want to receive support and I don't want to put myself more at risk for surveillance and community policing. Download the value statement off our website and advocate for your safety by sharing with service providers and in community today. Mm -hmm.